He's not only a god in competitive, but he's a god on stream. He was one of FaZe Clan's most well-known Fortnite stars, but as the old saying goes, the faster you rise, the harder you fall. And in early 2020, most people had given up hope on Tifu's career post FaZe Clan. He was getting drunk on stream, he was seeming to engage in wilder stunts online for attention, but could things finally be looking up? After an unexpected reconciliation with FaZe Banks and a heavy grind in solos leading to success, could 2020 be the year that Tifu claws his way back to the top? This is the story of a new Tifu. A story that recaps his legendary esports career, how everything came crashing down after an untimely divorce from FaZe Clan, and then a discussion around what everyone wants to know. Where is Tifu now? Will Tifu ever recover from the tumultuous lawsuit brewing in the background of his incredible talent and career? Or will those events cause his slow and painful decline into irrelevance? By the time that Fortnite Battle Royale came out, Tifu was no stranger to the Battle Royale genre. He learned the basics on H1Z1 and PUBG. It was in PUBG that Tifu's career actually began when he became one of the members of Rogue Esports' opening PUBG lineup. Unfortunately for Rogue, Tifu didn't see much in the way of competitive play in PUBG. Fortnite had already started to steal all of the attention. It didn't take long for Tifu to become one of the most popular Fortnite streamers, though. His approach to the game was different to most of the competition. While other streamers might have been focused on flashy skins, outplays, or dances, Tifu was focused on one thing and one thing only, becoming the best. Tifu's playstyle was a simple but effective one. He lands his shots, he places building pieces when and where he needs to, and most importantly, he won, won, and won. This constant success in the game, coupled with his growing viewer count on Twitch, brought him under the spotlight of one of the world's biggest esports teams, FaZe Clan. If you grew up with esports, you wanted to be in one of these two organizations, either Optic or FaZe Clan. It's the dream of so many players in the esports community. And for Tifu, he got to live that dream, and it propelled him into even greater heights. It was around this time that Fortnite's competitive scene was starting to establish itself. There wasn't anything in the way of official epic events, but Keemstar had started to host his Friday Fortnite tournaments. This was where Tifu got his first taste of Fortnite competitive, and he loved it. The man was hungry for victory, and ended up coming in first in four out of the five events that he competed in. By that time, Epic Games had realized that there was probably something pretty special about their game if a bunch of streamers had set up their own competitive circuit. And so, they started their own tournaments with a much bigger prize pool. And Tifu wasn't just a run-of-the-mill esports competitor. Tifu became a dominant, unstoppable force in the Fortnite skirmish series and managed to win a grand total of $130,000 throughout his performance. It didn't seem to matter what happened in the game, Tifu could not be stopped. He could hit the shots and make the plays that most players wouldn't even bother to think of. He had mastered every new weapon in the game and every new item that was introduced to the game in record times. And some would even consider him as a competitive plague on the Fortnite community because he was mopping up tournament victories wherever he played. Nobody could emulate Tifu's playstyle. It seemed as though at this time, he was the unchallenged king of Fortnite. But nothing can last forever. If you rise this far, this fast, there's always a possibility that it could all fall apart. And Tifu knows that firsthand. He knows it better than anyone else. It all started at the Fortnite World Cup. At the time, Tifu had risen to be one of the most recognizable names in Fortnite. He was one of the fastest growing and most popular channels on Twitch. He had more tournament experience than anyone else, and he was expected to take the tournament with ease. He fed into that level of hype as well. He went onto that world stage not looking like an esports player with a jersey, but wearing a strange leopard print outfit that just screamed for people to pay attention to him. When asked by the commentators how prepared he was for the upcoming tournament, Tifu brushed it off, claiming that he was all too familiar with playing under pressure because of previous tournaments that he had played in and won. 
He said that he could even handle 30 stream snipers rushing him every game, and he should be able to handle the World Cup like a breeze, right? Suffice to say it, Tifu was far from right. And Tifu stands no chance, can't even fire a shot. And there's the frustration from Tifu. He knows he has not had the day he's wanted. One of the biggest names in competitive Fortnite, one of the winningest players of all time, getting shut down here at the Fortnite World Cup Solo Final. His overconfidence was his ultimate downfall. I think I could still take all three of you at the same time. Wow. wow. But I don't want to flex too hard. I mean, I'm pretty serious, dude. This should have been his moment to shine brighter than ever, his chance to prove that he was truly the best Fortnite player the world has ever seen. And unfortunately for him, he didn't prove any of that. He kept on getting eliminated early into the matches and didn't even put any points onto the board until a few games into the event. Tifu wasn't just mad, he was furious. Low profile players were demolishing him in every fight and in one game, he even got eliminated by King in such a way that it almost made Tifu look like another average gamer. Tifu had never claimed outright to be the best in the game, but the way he'd hyped himself up before the event and the way he acted about the pressure of it all made it obvious that he was expecting so much more. And it wasn't only him who had high expectations. Everyone in the world who was watching that event thought that he would place top five minimum. The combination of the state of the game after the World Cup and his performance in the tournament itself led him to one drastic decision. He would be stepping away from Fortnite Esports entirely. He would still stream the game and play casually, but never again would he play in another tournament. You're gonna quit Fortnite for after the World Cup? Um, competitive yet. I'm not gonna qualify anyway, since like, I shouldn't even be playing this shit, mostly, but I don't care. I don't need the money anyway. I'm just playing it for fun. You might think that that would have been the end for Tifu and Fortnite's competitive scene, considering he had stepped away from it entirely. But Tifu's break with Fortnite competitive was not a clean one. There was a storm brewing on the horizon, a storm in the form of a lawsuit. In September 2018, Tifu's legal team took another unprecedented move. They reached out to FaZe and attempted to get Tifu's contract terminated early. The reason, according to Tifu's team, FaZe had breached the agreement that the two parties had come to when Tifu was accepted to the team. The suit claimed that FaZe had tried to own Tifu. They said that the agreement was grossly oppressive, it was one-sided. The documents that Tifu's team submitted stated that FaZe were entitled to 80% of all revenue that were paid by third parties for Tifu's services. This wouldn't include any income from Twitch or YouTube, but it would include anything from sponsorship deals that Tifu had been involved with. The allegations only increased in severity from there. On the next donation, the okay, dude digging right, for the $5. Chat, he, got the, he has to go. He's drunk. Let's go. Drunk and digging for the $10, dude. Come on. Come on. Thank you for smoking some beers with me. Thank you for subscribing to me. They also claimed that members of the team had pressured him into underage drinking and taking part in dangerous stunts while visiting the LA Phase House. Anybody who's seen Tifu's YouTube content before joining FaZe can surmise that this allegation is baseless. Since his mid-teens, Tifu has been posting dozens of videos on YouTube where he is drinking underage and doing wild stunts with his brother's channel, Juke Squad. Rightfully so, FaZe has claimed that those allegations are completely unfounded considering Tifu's wild past. Encouraged to do stunts and as a result he was injured like homie what Turner we all know you're a fucking sicko you jump off of shit You've been doing that far 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 before you met us and the first thing you did when you came to LA The very first thing you did was you brought us all up to the reservoir and you jumped off of the Hollywood reservoir And if anyone was pressuring anybody into doing that it was you pressuring Tommy his brother Gwit into doing it Adapt if you don't jump you have to jump with one of us all right yeah. Let's go, go, baby! Let's go, baby! Not all the videos show Tifu outright pressuring others, but as you can see, Tifu is at the very least partaking, and some of these videos are pretty crazy. Oh! 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 No, don't do it, bro! Don't do it, Turner! Turner, don't do it. Who? Who? Oh, 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 my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's clear.
clear to say that no matter who the pressurer was, this definitely doesn't look good for either of the two parties. Therefore, Tifu eventually took those allegations out of the lawsuit altogether. His explanation for the removal was that his lawyer inserted the claim to make the case stronger against FaZe Clan, not because he even wanted them there in the first place. There was also another FaZe Clan star trying to get out of his contract for the same reason, and it was none other than Tifu's duo partner, Cloaksy. They've been trying to leave for the past six months before the whole Tifu thing came out. I mean, you guys saw the contract. I'm on the same exact contract. Same exact for sense. Yes, I was offered other contracts. And we couldn't come to a conclusion. Throughout all of this, Cloaksy is stuck by Tifu's side, and they even ended up following through on their plans to move in together. And even though they don't play together as a duo now, they still have fun playing Fortnite to this day. Many people already know of this legal battle, but what many of you guys don't know is that this battle is still going on. And it's not just a battle that affects money, it's an emotional battle, one filled with betrayal and heartbreak. At the time, FaZe Banks thought that he and Tifu had been friends. Tifu had felt like he had been taken advantage of. There were no winners in this situation, least of all, Tifu's career. When he was a part of FaZe, he enjoyed viewer levels of over 50,000 viewers in a stream. These days, he's averaging around 25,000. That's still a big number, but a drop of over 50% in your viewers has to be a scary prospect. After the lawsuit, Fortnite fans were split between fans of FaZe Clan and fans of Tifu. While he had been successful before FaZe, the effects of the lawsuit seemed to take a massive toll on the Fortnite streamer. The period between the lawsuit in April 2019 and January 2020 was a dark time for Tifu. His streams were self-destructive, his tweets were dramatic, he didn't just lose people tuning into his stream, he lost people close to him as friends became more and more distant. In many live streams from late 2019, we see a side of Tifu that none of us wanted to see. He seemed to always be drunk, always doing something crazy to get attention. Looking back on that time now, Tifu would probably not like the image of himself. But those saved videos may be a glimpse into who Tifu was and what he is starting to change about himself to become a better person with a stable career. So far, the only court rulings have been a dismissal of some of the charges that were levied against FaZe. There has been a date set for July 6th this year for both parties to meet up again in court, and we'll make sure to keep you guys updated of all the news that transpires. The lawsuit is still going on, but it seems as though Tifu has risen above it both personally and professionally. Shot! Can he do this, Bala? A good old-fashioned 1v1 right now. The fake out with the wall. Playing the block line of sight, oh, and he baby. does falls right down. Not only has he been rising up in his solo career over the past few months, he seems to have started to reconcile his relationships with FaZe Banks. In January 2020, Banks shocked us all by posting a picture of himself and Tifu on his Instagram hanging out, just like they used to do before all of this drama. Not only that, in February, Tifu and Banks had a short back and forth on Twitter, which ended up with Banks saying he just wanted to go back to how things were before. The credit for this reunion seems to be in the lap of none other than Tom Brady. Banks has always let it be known that Tom Brady has been an idol of his in his life, so it might not come as a surprise that if anyone could reunite Tifu and FaZe Banks, it would be Tom Brady. According to Banks, the reunion happened when Tifu had managed to play a game with Brady's son, and then reached out to Banks despite the drama so he could get in on the action. Cool to just mention that uh, Tifu set all that up because he really didn't have to, and despite all the stuff we've been through, Maybe Tifu just realized that when the chips are down, you have to make a change. Or maybe he decided that fighting with Banks wasn't worth it, and that the story isn't about money, but it's about friendship and relationships. We might not ever know why, but either way, the Fortnite community is extremely happy that the friendship is finally back on the mend, and that Tifu is going forward with a clear mind and with friends to back him up. When you're someone like Tifu, you just have to get back on the horse and try to make things work. And 2020 has been an incredible testament to Tifu doing just that. He's been going back to the streaming basics and it's been paying off massively. Even with Valorant's launch and all the streamers jumping ship to go stream Valorant, Tifu is not one of those people. He's been sticking to the game that he knows and that he loves. And he is loyal, not only to the game, but to his millions of fans that love watching and engaging with this incredible Fortnite superstar. And the diehard Fortnite fans must have been thrilled to see his statement on how he feels about Valorant after he played it, claiming it was an old man's game. 
And while after the Fortnite World Cup, Tifu said that he was never going to take place in a competitive Fortnite event again, he's currently competing in the FNCS and playing in competitive scrims to practice his skills. The result? A steady return to Tifu's old self. Viewers are remembering why they started watching Tifu in the first place, and for the most part, it wasn't because he was a part of FaZe Clan. It's because Tifu is a Fortnite god who is almost unrivaled when he puts his mind to the test. His combination of off-the-cuff commentary, incredible precise Fortnite play, and constant winning is an intoxicating mix for the perfect stream. For Tifu, the future is starting to seem bright once again. His viewer numbers are up, he seems to be having fun playing the game, and he's taking part in competitive events. 2020 is only getting started, and we wish Tifu the best of luck on his incredible journey to reclaiming his throne as the best Fortnite player in the world. He's hungry for it, and he's not going to stop fighting. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you guys enjoyed this story of the new Tifu, his rise to fame, his fall from grace, and his rise once again to hopefully become one of the best in the world. Once again, if you guys want to get better at Fortnite and play like Tifu or play with someone like Tifu, then go to ProGuides.com and find a pro coach right now who will help you get a lot better at the game. There's nothing more fun than being good at Fortnite and then owning everyone. Once again, it's been Kristoff, guys. Thank you so much for watching the video. Leave a like and sub to the channel if you haven't already, and we'll see you guys in the next one.